Today we're talking about Audio Snap and Cakewalk by BandLab. If you've never heard of Audio Snap before, stick around after this introduction and I will teach you all about it. I will show you how to use it and I have a pretty good idea you guys are gonna like it. Welcome everybody, I'm Dan Spencer and I am the Audio Sorcerer. So this is the channel where I teach you how to perfect your audio recording, mixing and mastering skills. So before we get to the video, make sure you guys smash that like button. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know to have new videos coming out. So without further ado, today we are talking about Cakewalk Audio Snap. So the question is, what is Audio Snap? So Audio Snap is quantizing audio. And what quantizing is, is you're basically taking the transient of each note and you're snapping it to a grid so it is perfectly time aligned. So your performance basically sounds perfect when it comes to timing. So I've done a video on quantizing MIDI in Cakewalk. That's popping up in the top right now. Check it out after the story if you have time. But today is all about audio. And audio is maybe a little bit more complicated, but overall it's the same concept. So in today's tutorial, we're gonna be looking at this guitar part I recorded right here. It is a four measure picking part. And what we're gonna do is we're going to quantize it using audio snap and make it sound perfect when it comes to timing. So the cool thing about this is that if you wanted to, you can essentially turn this into a loop down the road. So this is four bars right now. So we can loop it up, make it eight, we can make it 16. Essentially, we're starting the foundation of a loop now. So with that being said, let's get into it and we will look at the audio snap palette. All right, so to access the audio snap palette, you need to go up to the views menu at the top. Then you need to go down to Audio Snap Palette, or you can launch it with a keyboard shortcut of Alt-A. So let's open up this window now. So this is the Audio Snap Palette. So it may look a little overwhelming at first, but don't worry, it's not that complicated. And I'm gonna take you through all the parameters in here that you need to know, and I'll let you know what you don't need to know. So to actually apply this to a clip, we need to click on the clip so it's highlighted. So I'm gonna click on this. So now it's lit up in gray. And then I need to hit the power button. And you're gonna see that we can now see all the transients on the clip. So this means that we can actually move these around and do stuff to them. So we'll get to you know modifying that in a second, but I do wanna go over these parameters first. So starting with tempo, this is not something we're gonna use. And this is not really all that beneficial to just modifying a clip like we're doing now, essentially perfecting a performance. So you can actually have a project be tempo be set from a clip, or you can have the clip follows the project, which that's kind of good if you import a sample that's not even close to the tempo of the song. You can kind of use this button here to force it into the tempo of the song, but there's, there's some other stuff that has to go along with that to make it work right. And you can also edit the clip map. So for this tutorial, we're not gonna be using any of the tempo stuff in here. So for timing, I actually don't use anything in here except for quantize. Now, quantize would be something if I want to essentially have this whole clip highlighted and hit a quantize button, it automatically snaps everything for me. But that only works if you have a really good performance. If your performance is all over the place, it's gonna snap it to the wrong grid lines. So if I open the quantize window here, you're gonna see that we have you know several settings in here, but really the only one I care about is duration. So in most scenarios, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, it's gonna be 1 8 or 1 16. Now, I can't tell you what your song is gonna be because it depends on how many notes you played and what tempo the song is in. So I think those are the two most common. For this song, I could tell you, just knowing what I played, it's gonna be 1 8 for sure. So I'm gonna hit cancel here because otherwise if I hit okay, it's gonna quantize all my um, transients here, which I don't wanna do yet. So I'm gonna hit cancel. Uh, like I mentioned, that's the only thing I use in time. You don't worry about extract groove or apply groove. That's just basically, I can extract the groove from what I played here, or I can apply a groove from something I took from another clip that I did. So, I mean, it's cool, but I don't really, I can't think of many situations, if any, that you would use that in. Okay, so up here, this tells you the average tempo. Um, I'm actually just gonna set this down to 90. That's what my project is. And then at the bottom, 
is probably some of the most important stuff. So applies to, this is are the different things that you can apply this to. We're obviously working with clips, so we're gonna leave it on clips. So online and offline processing. So online is what you're doing in real time. So these are your options. You have default, groove, percussion, Elastic Pro, and Elastic Efficient. So I recommend doing almost all your stuff on Pro that's not like drums. Drums you want to do on percussion. So in our scenario, we're gonna be doing this on Pro. And then for offline, um, I would also likely keep this on Pro unless you are doing bass or vocal. So these are some extra little options they have in here. So uh, Radius Mix and Radius Mix Advanced, these are for when you're working with multiple tracks, okay? So in our scenario, and I never use, and use these ever, so <laughs> I can't really tell you when you would use them. Uh, they exist, uh, but for us, we're gonna just keep it on Elastic Pro here. And I think that's gonna sound the best for guitar, what we're doing. And then your threshold here, this uh, allows you to see more or less of the transient lines here. So if I drag this on over, you're gonna start seeing them disappear. And this is good in case it sees too many of them. And that happens sometimes. So uh, we'll start with zero and we'll dial that in a little bit better. And the only other thing that I really want you to know is this little split button right here, because this will allow you to actually split all of these into individual clips at the transient and it will automatically put crossfades in. That's something like if you guys ever heard of Pro Tools Beat Detective, that's kind of like that. Not something I ever use, but it's there. So again, I'm teaching you this, basically how to perfect a performance. And this is how I use um, audio snap and cakewalk, okay? So there's other things that this can, thing can do, but we're not gonna be talking about them in this tutorial. All right, with that being said, why don't I let you hear the guitar part and then we'll start fixing it. So let's give it a listen. <laughs> cool so you can tell that there are a few notes that are a little bit early I have a tendency to play uh, ahead of the beat so we're gonna fix that and take care of it so the first thing we need to do is to make sure which I already have on here your grid lines so it's really hard to move transients to a grid if you can't see them so if you go over to the view option here hit the down arrow go down to um, display, go down to vertical grid lines, and then you have an option for none, behind clips, or in front of clips. So I like to do in front of clips when I'm working on uh, audio snap because I want to see these grid lines. So that's what I have selected. And we're likely going to want to zoom in. So you can actually do uh, control your arrow keys on your keyboard to do this because we want to make sure we can really see uh, the grids here really well. So as you can see, we have two transient markers here, which we don't want. Each note should only have one transient. So we need to decide which one we want. And normally I'm gonna take the one furthest to the left. So if I want to get rid of this one here, I can simply click on it and I can right click and then I can do uh, disable and that gets rid of it. So this is the best thing to do. Uh, you can use the threshold fader as we did earlier to get rid of some of these, but it doesn't always work. So uh, we're actually just going to look through this and see if there's any we want to get rid of. Um, potentially this here, but we'll, we'll take a listen in a second. Let me scroll over. We're just looking for anything that looks like a double. So this is a double here for sure. So we're going to get rid of this one here. Right click, disable. Okay. All right, so what I wanna do, I actually wanna to listen to this right here and see how many notes that is. So let's actually give that a listen. All right, so that's only one note. So we wanna get rid of the second one also. So let's click on that, right click and disable. Cool, so we're actually looking pretty good. Honestly, this performance is pretty good. We could probably at this point just hit the quantize button it would be fine, but you know, if you want to be real thorough, because remember, you don't have to do this once in, in for a song, for you know a clip, and you're done. So you want to make it the best it can possibly be. 
So what we might want to do is simply just move these manually. So this one here, you can see is a little early. So if I hover over the middle here, I get these little brackets with two arrows on each side, and I click and drag, boom, it snaps right to there, okay? I could do the same here with this one. I can bring it there, and this one here, do it there. You can do this one here, this one there. So as you can see, I'm just kind of dragging and it's automatically snapping. So you're like, well, how does it just snap? It's because I have this little snap icon highlight at the top here. So you want to make sure that you have that um, enabled. And it looks like potentially uh, we may actually want to be working on a 1 16th grid. So I could have been wrong. So I'm actually going to change this to 1 16th. You actually have to right click here and go down here. You can see I got these little extra bars in here. So I'm going to click this and drag it back there. This one here looks a little early. Bring it there. This one looks a little early too. There and there. This one here. This one here. Okay, so let's actually listen to this first, uh, I guess it's a bar here, and let's see if it actually sounds good. All right, so let's give it a listen. Okay, so I actually made a mistake. I actually didn't need this one here and this one here because these notes hold out. So if I click on this one here, disable it, and then I click on this one here and disable it, let's actually give that a listen now and see if that sounds better. All right, that sounds really good to me. So what I wanna do is I want to actually go in and listen to the part of the clip here that I haven't fixed yet. And I actually wanna remove some more transients because I think there's too many in here. So I'm gonna do that. Then I'm gonna go in and I'm going to timeline all the transients and we'll have this done in a few minutes. So here we go. All right, well, I guess it was just one more bad one in there. All right, so let's actually timeline this all, and we'll be done here in a second. All right, for this last one here, I'm actually gonna to need to extend the clip outside of the audio transient mode. So let me click on this, go back to clips. Let me drag this out. And you'll see why I wanna do this. So we'll go back to audio transients. And now I could drag this to the beginning of the beat. So now it's perfect there. Now I can go back to clips, drag it back in. So now I got a perfect ending, okay? So I think we're looking pretty good. Let's give it a listen here and see if there's anything else we need to fix. All right, so it sounds pretty good to me. Uh, what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. So lastly, when you feel good about this, I don't recommend just leaving audio snap on. Um, I really don't know if it takes CPU power or not, but what you should do is click on your clip and you should go to bounce to clip and that will have processed your audio snap. So if you're worried about it being permanent, you can always just duplicate your actual clip here. So you can either actually create a new audio track and you can hold control and you can actually drag this onto the track here. So that's a way of duplicating a clip. All right. So that is what it takes to basically perfect a performance in Cakewalk by BandLab using Audio Snap. So as you can see, it's a pretty powerful tool. If your performance is way out of whack and you're moving transients pretty far, you are going to get some artifacts. 
I would go as far as say there might be some artifacts even when I just did. It's hard to tell because I have a kind of chorus effect on that guitar. So chorus already has some pitch shifting within it. So that's why it's a little bit hard to tell. But overall, if you put this into a mix, like you have drums behind it or even just vocals over it, you wouldn't know. It would sound good enough. So yeah, so that is Audio Snap in Cakewalk by BandLab. So if you guys liked this tutorial and you learned a lot, give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe and hit that notification bell to know I have new videos coming out. So with that being said, until the next video, I will see you guys later and peace out.